you need more days in your life. This is a little bit of a moment for me. I was standing in line in the bathroom, and Tyler Hansbro was like, of a fangirl moment then still. Yeah, yeah, I like blanked. It was just like, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> he was kind of like, cool, thanks, bye. <laughs> I'm going to be taking his stats starting the next day. We're just like, hey. There's a book out there, I think it's by a guy named Garrison Keeler, but it's titled How to Talk to Celebrities. <laughs> normally, like, I'm so good. Like, nothing normally phases me, but I guess not. I'm like, wow, like, yeah, I no. didn't expect you to be here, man. Yeah, no. no, no. Hey, Gene. How are you? Good. Did you go to date? Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I think a lot of the other people that were didn't come, right? Okay, we're about to start with uh, North Carolina. Coach Davis will be with Armando Baycott, R.J. Davis, and Jalen Withers. Okay, in lieu of an opening statement, we're going to take a couple questions for Coach Davis first, then we'll entertain questions for the student-athletes, let them go back to the locker room, and we'll continue to coach. First question to our right. Josh Graham, WSJS. Coach, you said about a month ago it's very important to you how Armando finishes his career. To see what he did tonight, just how special is it watching from your viewpoint? Yeah, it is. It's um, It's... It's been on my mind all season, you know, especially a lot more towards the end that, you know, what Armando has meant to me personally, but what he's meant to this program and this university and this community. And I just, I just told him in the locker room, I said, wherever all my comments come from is there is a desperation 
because I want Armando and everyone, I want them to be able to see and experience the things that us as coaches have seen and experienced. That's where it comes from. And um, I'm just really proud of Armando. Somebody just made a stat, what was it, 15 rebounds? Six straight NCAA tournament games. I mean, that's just, that's unreal. And um, can't think of a better person to be able to do that than Armando. Back left. Yeah, Hubert, um, obviously, you know, Jay Witt with the, you know, double-double off the bench, particularly in the first half, obviously getting into the free throw line a lot, things like that. How did you kind of see his activity, uh, you know, really start to, I guess, set the tone a little bit uh, early on in that game? I, I agree with you. I, I think he did set the tone. I felt like in the first half, uh, at times we were out of character from the standpoint we weren't finishing the, uh, the def defensive possession with a rebound. When we did, we always talk about making the easy play, limiting turnovers, and uh, I think we had six in the first half and they were all unforced, but Jay Witt, his energy and effort on both ends of the floor really ignited us and got us the lead going into halftime. I mean, his, he came off the bench and his production was real. Okay, questions now for Armando, RJ, and Jalen. And please address the questions to a specific student athlete. First question here. John Treach, WCCB Charlotte. Jalen, I'm sure there's a ton of risk and, and challenges involved anytime you, you transfer. But to have your best game as a Tar Heel come in your hometown in the NCAA tournament, how rewarding is that? Um, it's extremely rewarding. I mean, you know, honestly, having a double double in front of you know, a lot of my family members in the, in the stands and, you know, contributing to the, the win uh, is, is great, honestly. First time in the, the tournament, so, I mean, doing that in the first game is definitely surreal. Middle of the room to our right. Yeah, Kelly Blackburn for the Niner time. Just going off of that, Jalen, you know, you're from Charlotte. What does it mean to you to just have the game you did today and just having the opportunity to play in your hometown? Um, it, mean, it means a lot. Um, I mean, last outing that I had or that we had here when we played Oklahoma, um, kind of got into foul trouble and uh, ended up not really having the best playing, playing time, I guess. So I think that I uh, kind of wanted to make a statement this game. Second row in front of me. Jeremy Grandison, ESPN Charlotte. Armando, one part of your game that sticks out to me is your patience and your constant movement. You go to the elbow, that's not there. You go to the post up, you switch sides. Can you just talk about your progression as a player and how it allows you to have stat lines like this consistently? Some we worked on every day in practice. Um, at the beginning of practice, we always work on our post feeds. And early on in the year, I felt like at times I was a little impatient, not being able to find my spots. But ever since we started working on that, I've been a lot more comfortable in just figuring out my spots and not feeling like I need to rush anything. Right aisle. Aaron Beard with the AP. This is for Jalen. Uh, sort of piggybacking off the earlier questions, Hubert was saying you set the tone. There was a lot of energy and activity you brought in the paint. What was sort of your mindset about you know, being aggressive, getting on the glass, getting to the rim, running the court the way you did in the first half in particular? Um, HD typically challenges us um, before the game and sometimes at half, you know, saying that it's, uh, needs, it doesn't need to be a, only an Armando Baycott rebounding game or a Harrison Ingram re rebounding game. He uh, challenges everybody else to you know, help out and, and clean up on the glass. Third row in front of me, third row. Dennis Cox, 999 on the fan, WRL Sports in Raleigh. RJ Davis, uh, for you, you always spoke earlier this week about the tempo of the game, how, uh, how Wagner slows the game down a little bit. Do you guys feel like you're able to play at the pace that you want to play tonight? I think in the first half, we didn't do a good job of um, getting down to primary break. Um, we had zero fast break points going to the halftime. So the emphasis in the second half was um, try to get out and run, because um, that's a big advance for us, especially when we're playing in primary and getting easy layups. And we did a good job of, you know, kind of turning the ball over and uh, getting finished in easy layups. I know there's a play when I threw the ball to Elliott and then Jay Witt finished with dunk. So those are the type of plays that we needed. Third row to my right. Josh Graham again, WSJS Armando. You've got, <coughs> as Steve was talking about, 15 uh, rebounds and six straight NCAA tournament gains. You've got the turbo tax ads and all. Just how much, after last year missing out on this, just how much do you enjoy March? It's a great feeling, but I've enjoyed this whole year just being able to be back with so many great teammates and a great coaching staff. And we've had a lot of fun, and we don't plan on going home soon. So yeah, that's really it. Second row, same side. Brett Friedlander, SaturdayRoad.com. RJ, uh, in the NCAA tournament, you always want to get a little bit better every round you go. What areas do you think between now and Saturday are the areas that you guys want to get a little bit better at? 
Um, attention to detail is definitely number one. I feel like sometimes throughout the game today, uh, we slacked off in that area a little bit. Um, and um, on defensive end, I think there was a couple of times in the first half there was miscommunication or no communication that kind of led to open threes or um, getting the 50-50 loose balls. And we're usually on top of that. So we got to do a better job of going into Saturday because Michigan State is a really good ball club. And we just got to come ready to play. Back left, last question for the student athletes. Brendan Lunga, The Daily Tar Heel. Armando, what is it about the NCAA tournament that brings out the best in you? And did you feel like you wanted to come in and make a statement today after what happened last year? I mean, it's win or go home. I mean, lose or go, if you lose, you go home. So it's just one of those things where it's just uh, even more sense of urgency to just go out there and play my best. And all year we've worked to get to this point. So just super locked in and trying to win. Okay, guys, thanks. Good job, Armando. Y'all can head back to the locker room if you want to. Hands. <laughs> and the locker room remains open. <laughs> Congratulations, that's awesome. You didn't mean me, right? <laughs> okay, questions for Coach Davis. No further questions? Oh, front row. Second row, rather. Hubert, I'll ask you the same question that I asked RJ. Uh, you know, what areas do you feel like are the most important to make that little improvement between this round and the next? I, I just, um, when I talked about that, I felt like at times we were out of character in the first half. We just, we just got to be better defensively. Um, you know, we talk about finishing each possession defensively, one, without fouling, and two, getting the rebound. And, we just got to do a better job at that. It hasn't been any secret. We've identified what allows us to have success, and that's get after it defensively, rebound, and take care of the basketball. And I felt like in the first half, we had moments where we weren't checking any of those boxes. And that's something, you know, as you continue to move forward and, you know, specifically against Michigan State, you just, just can't do that. You got to be sound in all three of those areas. Third row in front of me. Coach, second round matchups rarely have traditional heavyweights like Michigan State and North Carolina. As a basketball fan and the guy who's been in the game, can you appreciate this spot? Well, being a part of the NCAA tournament for four years as a player and as an assistant for nine years and um, been a head coach for three years, but two years in the NCAA tournament, the second round has always been real. So I can't remember a time. My junior year, we played Villanova. That's two heavyweights. Uh, the year in 2017, we won the championship. It was us against Arkansas, two heavyweights. And so um, when it gets down to the round of 32, there's only 32 teams left. So it, that round is normally going to be two extremely um, um, good programs. And uh, we're excited about the challenge of playing against a, um, a great um, Michigan State team. Hubert, uh, Anthony Pagnotta, WFNZ in Charlotte. Uh, just wondering, uh, you know, we see Jalen Withers. He started to show signs of improvement as the season has, uh, you know, come down the stretch. Is there really a moment from him that you started to see some things sort of click this year? No, I mean, you know, I always tell the guys that win, and I, and I um, you know, specify when your opportunity comes. I can't tell you when, where, how, and which, but when it does come, you got to be ready. And, you know, Jay Witt is always, when his number is called, has always been ready. Also, it, it is a big transition to go from one program or one team to another team. I, you know, I've experienced that in the NBA personally, and even these kids, it's even more. They're doing it at, you know, 18, 19 years old, and they're changing not only programs, but teams, but they're, changing institutions where they, you know, from an academic standpoint, it's a big deal. And so it takes time for guys to get acclimated on and off the court to allow on the court um, to be at your best. And I just feel like for Jay Witt, it's just continue to get more comfortable every day and um, to get him to a point where he had a game like this um, today. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Okay, thank you.
He knows that they're done, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not, not four. Well, hang on. That's not what I said. Make that one, not four. Four, eleven, thirteen. Hang on. Four. So one instead of, so just add one, right? One, 11, council?
Okay, in lieu of an opening statement, we'll take a couple questions first for Coach Copeland. Raise your hand, let us get the mic to you. First question, front row to the right. Yeah, Jerry Carino from the Bergen Record. Congrats on a, on a great run, Cope. Um, Thank you, Jerry. What was this like for you and for your program to be on the stage and within 10 or 12 points in North Carolina with 10 minutes left? No, it was, it was big uh, for me, you know, definitely coaching wise. Um, these guys here, because uh, they feel they belong here. You know, I think they worked work to put themselves in this position and then to play in this type of atmosphere. Um, obviously, it was flooded with North Carolina fans, as you would expect. Um, uh, I was happy for them to be able to compete in this, and I was really proud the way they competed. Um, you know, obviously what we've d gone through all year is unideal, but um, we expected to play well. We expected to win the game. Um, obviously we didn't, but, um, you know, I'm glad the way we played. <clears throat> Front row. I have another question for Donald. Uh, there's been some talk of eliminating auto bids for mid-majors. What would you say about the importance of having programs like Wagner on this stage, what it means to you, what it means to all schools of that nature? Right. Um, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think, uh, you know, the, uh, Wagner's and, and, and schools of this level make the tournament just as any other high major or blue blood program. Um, it's a chance to compete. You know, we're all under one flag. Obviously, we, we all know the um, – the difference in certain conferences and of, of that nature, but um, what makes March Madness fun, what makes the NCAA tournament is that, that the fact it's a one game season, every game and anything can happen and anything is possible. So uh, it gives meaning to your, to your season. You know, everyone's playing for a championship and I think if you win a championship in your conference, you should have the right to compete uh, on a national stage just with everybody else. Okay, questions now for uh, Julian, Melvin and Javier. Please raise your hand. We'll get the handheld mic to you. Who is the first question? Yeah, Jerry Carino from the Bergen Record again. For Julian, uh, you you were playing against a high school teammate tonight, uh, Elliot. What was that like for two Bergen Catholic guys to be going at it on a stage like this? Um, you know, it's a blessing. You don't see that often. Uh, two high school teammates meet at the college level and playing in one of the biggest stages uh, in the world. Uh, I'm super proud of him. Uh, he's like a little brother to me. You know, after the game, I told him, you know, go win, go win the rest of this, you know, this tournament. Um, you know, I'm super proud of him. I love him. It was great to compete against him uh, today, and um, I'm super proud of him. Any other questions? Or do we just, we'll just stay with the Bergen record here. Yeah, one more from Jerry Carino, Bergen Record. This is for any and all of the players. Uh, what's, what's this experience been like for you? Uh, what has this done for you and for Wagner basketball? Um, Ellen? This has been amazing. This is like a dream come true. This is what everybody dreams. Every kid that plays basketball, they want to play at this level. And I'm just blessed. I, just, I wouldn't be without, here without Gus. So I just want to thank him. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank that man upstairs for allowing us to uh, have this opportunity to uh, play at this level and, you know, compete uh, against the best college players in the world. Um, and I would, I would like to thank my coach for always uh, believing in us, uh, even when we had seven players, uh, you know, giving us confidence, giving us momentum coming into this tournament and even back in the conference tournament. So uh, I couldn't have done it without my teammates, my coaches. The staff, the school, you know, I, I give all the credit to them because without them, I don't think we would be here. So kudos to them. Okay, we also have people on Zoom. So we'll have a, we have a question from Dan uh, Tortoro. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, this is for Dan Tortoro, wakeupcalldt.com for each of the student athletes. The NEC, just what you were able to do in the conference this season to even make this a possibility to play in the NCAA tournament. Just what you can say about the Northeast Conference, the level of competition, and reflecting on the positivity that got you here. Go from left to right. Julian? Um, you know, it's, it's a great conference. You know, everybody's trying to compete for an NCAA, NC, NEC uh, championship. So uh, all the teams is competing. You know, it's, it's, it was tough for us having seven guys and having to play them twice and then maybe three times in the playoffs. So it's a really tough conference. 
Uh, people probably look at it and say, oh, it's a small conference. It's, probably, it's not the a, uh, ACC or SEC, but I could compare those. I could compare. I could, I can go down the line to one of those teams, and those teams could be a high major team. You know, it's not just a small conference. You know, look at us. You know, we we made it to March Madness. What makes you think another NEC couldn't make it? You know what I'm saying? So I put respect on the NEC because it's a very tough conference. Melvin, like Julian said, uh, it's tough. But you know, Coach preached toughness to us every day, so that's what we uh, we ran with for the conference and came out NEC champs. Like they said, it's a tough conference, and everybody's trying to make the tournament. Only one team make it, so, yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. You, just, you can head back to the locker room. Locker room, I think, remains open. And uh, congratulations and a great year. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate it. OK, we'll continue to take questions for Coach Copeland. To our friend in the front row. Yes, hi, Jerry Carino, Bergen Record again. Donald, what what happened this month? How can this impact your program going forward? How can you build off this? Um, no, I think it, it helps in a positive way for sure. This has always been the expectation. Um, whether we've had difficult seasons or some of the successful seasons we've had, there's always been an expectation of winning the NEC conference and then having a chance to compete. So uh, it's nice to be able to do that. Um, and it definitely gives the program something to continue to strive for uh, and hopefully try to get better because you have to get better. You know, you can't just do it the same way. So it's good to finally get this done and now raise expectations. Jerry, any other questions? OK. Are you sticking around to watch Bosch and St. Peter's? I would love to. Uh, I don't know our schedule right now off the top of my head. We and, he and I have uh, spoken. Um, so uh, if it's possible, I, I would. I would like to. Any other questions? OK, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. Did Jerry